Hey guys, so I guess I have a bit of another different vlog for you today. As you can probably see, I'm all packed up here, but I'm not in uniform. The reason is that I will be packing to Sydney. So I would love to say that I'm going to have some interesting destination for you today, but I will actually be staying in Sydney for the next two weeks. Now the reason I will be staying in Sydney is because I finally have my multi-endorsement training. So this means like, um, that I'm going to be trained on more than one aircraft. So at the moment I am only trained on the A330 and I will be getting trained on the A380, which I did fly on at Emirates, and the 787, which is a completely new aircraft for me. I have flown on the 777, so I'm going to be able to see the differences. But I'm really, really excited and yeah, I'm going to bring you guys with me um, to see pretty much a training day in the life of a international flight attendant. So I hope this will be interesting for you guys, especially if you're looking at becoming a cabin crew. Your initial training will be a lot like this. You have to run through things called drills and um, learn a lot and study a lot and it can be very stressful. So I hope you guys will enjoy coming along with me for the next two weeks. All right, so this is kind of like the type of outfit that I wear packsing. So I always get cold, so I usually go for something that has like long sleeves um, and you should be in like business attire. So I just wear like my leather pants and some comfy shoes. So yeah, usually airlines do want you to pack either in uniform or in business attire. So this is my version of like <laughs> business attire or smart casual. Hey guys, welcome to my hotel room in Sydney. I am a little bit bummed out right now because my bag didn't um, make it onto the flight and they couldn't really tell me where it was. So I'm kind of hoping it's going to come tonight, um, but if not, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do because like all my toiletries are in there, my underwear, my bras. Um, so yeah, I have a uniform, but I don't really have anything else. So um, I guess we'll see. They're really nice at baggage services and they gave me some amenities and I think a pair of pajamas. Um, and I guess I'm lucky because I do have my packs and clothes and I have my uniform in my bag. Um, but I'm just kind of really hoping that it's going to show up either today or early tomorrow before I have training tomorrow at 1.30pm. So guys, wish me luck because I think I'm going to need it. Okay, so new room in Sydney. Here's a nice bathroom. I wish there was a bathtub, but that's okay. And then you come out into the main room with a nice big bed. And yeah, here it is. Okay, so this is actually super cute. So I guess this is what you get if Qantas... Um, misplaces or like delays your luggage so i'm gonna try and open it with one hand it's gonna be hard just bear with me so it looks like i've got some pajamas if that has a kangaroo with a corner sign on it i'm dying and oh my goodness this is actually so good deodorant toothbrush toothpaste comb okay that does save my life a little bit i'll be honest i am feeling a little bit less heartbroken because i got pajamas and i have a kangaroo on them so i just feel like i wouldn't be able to get these any other way so no complaints here right now as long as it shows up by tomorrow. Wish me luck. Good morning, guys. So it's the next day. I still have no news on my bag. Um, so luckily, as you guys know, I am from Melbourne. So I called up mum this morning and I was like, can you send me some things? Um, so yeah. No, also not a bad ex uh, excuse to buy some new gym gear. So that's why I did online. Um, but I feel like I'm not looking too badly um, just yet. I do have some creams and things like luckily in my bag and I have all my hair stuff. And I do have all of my uniform. Uh, the only thing is I won't be able to wear my, I have to wear my cabin shoes, which are completely flat, and usually we have to wear a heel, so, um, at this point, beggars can't be choosers, so going with the cabin flat. Um, and as you can probably tell, I'm not wearing any makeup, so hopefully going to run over to Sophie's room, thank goodness she's on this training too, and I'm going to steal some. So hopefully I won't look like too much of a train wreck today, but I'm definitely going to try my best, so wish me luck for my first day of training. Thank goodness for Sophie's makeup. <laughs> Alright guys, so yesterday, uh, I didn't film anything because it was very... Uh, theory focused. I pretty much just typed away my laptop. So this morning I'm going to have my breakfast. So I have my oats with my maple syrup and my greens. Um, and I'm going to review my notes because we have a written test today. So wish me luck. Good morning guys and welcome to my day off today during my um, multi-endorsement training. Um, so I'm in the moment in the middle of studying now. I'm studying for the A380. I have actually already finished the triple uh, 787. 
you're not on the triple seven anymore rachel sorry i have now finished the 787 so we're just working on the 380 which i have flown on before but honestly there's so many differences um so it is like a little bit confusing for me but we have all our tests on it tomorrow and then officially by tomorrow afternoon if we've passed everything we will be multi-endorsed on all the aircrafts um that my airline uses for international travel so that's really exciting um it has been a really stressful week i'm not going to lie it's just been a lot of information very quickly um and to be honest we have been spending a lot of time in the classroom and not so much time in the simulators um so i haven't even really been able to get any footage of really anything because it's basically just a teacher talking um saying that though i'm going to try and do my best um to show you guys exactly what this training is like and um just let you know like how it is um and everything like that but if you haven't been a cabin crew before and you're looking at going into an initial training know it is probably some of the most stressful um times in your life i do feel like a crazy person because this is like i have done it three times so yeah Okay, so since I haven't been able to film a lot of this training, I thought I would just give you guys a rundown about what it's like and the type of things you have to do. Um, so this one has been an endorsement training. So I was learning two different aircrafts and I've already been endorsed on one aircraft. So it does get run a little bit differently from the initial. So when you do your initial training, a training, it's a lot more in depth and you have to do um, a lot more different things like a cabin preparation um and you have to do like firefighting drills and things like that which aren't required if you do a multi-endorsement because you've already been like checked off on them um so when you do your multi-endorsement all you really have to do is your cabin doors so you're going to do like the standard door operating procedures and the emergency operating procedures so you can see in a video here my friend phil um is doing his cabin door operations for i think the a380 um so this is pretty much all you're going to do in the simulators and it's really really quick they show you how to do it you practice and then you do a test which is again why i haven't wasn't able to film a lot of it this time around um and then you have a little few extra things during your initial um so you'll have to do things like go down this escape slide which i know a lot of people are excited about but it is actually a lot higher than you think and i'm going to show a video of it of me going down and i actually really hurt my neck when i did it because we had to do a sit and slide and we had to do a jump and slide and when I jumped, I landed, you can see like flat on my back and I had to pull my body up. And I think when I pulled my body up, I actually did hurt my neck a little bit. So I was a bit sore. Um, and usually before you go down these slides, they give you these safety briefings and they're like, make sure when you get down the bottom, you do running. Cause I remember at Virgin, they're like, if you don't run, you land on your face and a girl broke her nose. Um, so, you know, they like to like kind of put fear in you before you go down. So it can be a little bit daunting. Um, and a day that everyone loves, which I will admit is not my favorite, is the water drill day. So during that day, you have to do a bunch of different drills about swimming and being in the life raft and things like that. So the reason that I don't like that, because in Australia, you have to be in the water and you have to climb from the water into the life raft wearing your life jacket. So as you can imagine, this is quite difficult. And the other thing is, it's quite stressful because if you cannot get into that raft, you don't get cleared. You will have to go home. So for me, it's very stressful. Um, even though I've gotten to the raft all, every single time with no problems, I think it is just the anxiety of having to do it because it is awkward. And if you're one of the first people in, the raft will tip and things like that because obviously there's no weight in the raft. Um, so usually the strategy is that you get some of the larger guys in first and they just pull everyone in. Um, that's pretty much what happens. But that's it guys that's pretty much the endorsement training uh and a little bit on the initials so i hope this video was helpful for you if you do want to be a cabin crew um if you do want any more information feel free to message me as i said i have now been through three initial trainings and i've also been through two uh conversion trainings where i've learned additional aircrafts so it's something i have done a lot um <laughs> and i feel a little bit crazy for but yeah if you have any questions or anything please feel free to let me know and i hope this video was helpful